Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And today we're going to be looking at restoring this vintage Star Wars Kenner Farm Boy Luke Skywalker. In fact, these three Farm Boy Luke Skywalkers, because I have a bag of broken Star Wars figures, which I've seen a few times over the years. Here you can see this is the bag. It's basically any time I get a broken Star Wars figure or one with sort of damage to it, I put it in here. And at some point I think I'm going to get parts that I can uh, sort of rebuild them. I've certainly shown this bag before because I think the most recent time was uh, fixing up some Han Hoth versions. You can see there's a couple more here already. And I was going through this bag the other day and I found I've actually now got this amount of uh, Luke Skywalkers and they're all in a pretty sorry state. Uh, the most recent one was actually given to me by uh, Lawrence from Toy Planet UK. He gave me a whole box of uh, broken toys and in that was this poor uh, farm boy Luke. You can see he's lost most of the paint off of his hair. His body is very yellowed and if we turn him round uh, the back part of him has been burnt or damaged in some way so he's a really sorry looking figure. And I thought it'd be quite good fun to try and restore uh, the sort of the ones that I have so that they are displayable again. In fact the one in the middle here I've already started doing some work on because at one point I was given the remains of a Luke Skywalker that was missing a head and I was also given this other Luke Skywalker here which had been covered in black pen. You can see it's actually covered in marker pen. So what I did was I took the head because it had already snapped off this one and I've reattached it to this one using my sort of standard Lego fix. So I ended up with a reasonable looking figure but you can see he's still pretty yellowed and there's actually quite a lot of pen on his head. So we need to remove that. I thought I would try and fix up this one as well. Even though I don't have a head for it, I thought uh, it would be quite good to get the ink off it just in case one day I do find a spare head from him. You can see I've actually started the process on this. Uh, originally when this figure arrived, the arms were this colour black all over and uh, with a little bit of work it's starting to fade. You can see uh, it's starting to fade here. So we'll remove the paint on that one. We'll sort out the yellowing on these and we're going to do some other repairs as well. And we'll get these figures looking really quite nice. And as one final little sort of bonus in this video, in my bag of broken figures, I also had this, which is a headless uh, Luke pilot. So I think I'm going to make a version where we can swap the head off the one that already has the Lego repair onto this so I could have a piloted version of Luke as well. And I've already sort of started to do the process on that one as well. But the first thing we've got to do is to uh, de-yellow these and sort out the ink marks on them. So let's get those processes started. We'll start with the ink removal because uh, that's the bit that possibly is going to take the longest time. Certainly on this one, I don't believe I'll be able to get all of this done in this video, but I'll certainly make a good start on it. So I have, uh, this is the damaged body there. And this is the head that was originally on that figure. And you can see there's just a little bit of ink around the front part of him. I'm going to be repainting his hair anyway, so I don't need to worry about that. But there's some ink on the front of his head there. So what you need to do is get some spot cream that contains benzyl peroxide. Now I used to use Oxy 10 for this but that actually seems to be quite hard to get in the UK so I bought some other stuff which is this uh, non-branded uh, spot cream but it does contain benzyl peroxide so you can see this contains 5% benzyl peroxide. And what you do is you liberally put this onto the uh, ink spot so we'll just put some over his face there and then I'm going to do uh, some of this figure because I don't think I've got enough to do all of it. So you liberally put it over the places that have the ink on it. And then to stop it drying out, we're going to wrap it in cling film. You can see I've got some cling film here and put it in the sun and just sort of leave it in the sun for a few hours. Uh, if it dries out, wash off uh, the benzoyl peroxide spot cream and then reapply it. And you'll have to keep doing that multiple times. The arm that you can see here that is a little bit lighter than the other side, I've done that about three times already. So you can see it, it does work. It's a slow process. Uh, but it will do it in the end. And on the, something like this, where it's really heavily covered in uh, ink, it's going to take a long time to do. So uh, just be patient. It may be that even when I've done this sort of 10 or more times, there still will be some ink left on this one. And I might just have to live with that, but it's worth a try. So there you go. You can see I've liberally coated this in the spot cream. I can put it onto the cling film like that, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, the cling film is there just to stop it drying out. Uh, you know, you can do it without wrapping it in cling film, but it will dry out very quickly and you'll have to keep reapplying it more and more often. So if we just wrap it like that, I'll go and put that in the sunshine and we'll give it a few hours, reapply it again if it's dried out or just smear it around a bit more and then that will be fine. But it takes a long time. Uh, just be very patient with it. For these two figures with the yellowing, you can see this one's got quite a yellow chest and uh, the back part is still quite yellowed. This one, the arms are yellowed. What we're going to be doing is putting it into some hydrogen 
hydrogen peroxide. Now I've got some uh, 40 volume uh, hydrogen peroxide which I'll be putting in this jar. I haven't got bought it inside with me because I find the uh, hydrogen peroxide a bit strong. It does tend to sort of damage your skin. So I'm going to do this all outside. I'm going to pop these two figures into the hydrogen peroxide and then leave it in the sun for potentially a couple of days depending on how sunny it is and that should take the yellowing out. I don't believe they will get uh, particularly white but they'll certainly look a lot better than they do to start with. Sometimes the plastic on the arms and the legs because it's a bit more rubbery than the harder plastic of the body doesn't tend to do yellow as well but it's worth a try. So I'll stick these both in there uh, and we'll leave it in the sun for a couple of days and that, let's see what it looks like then. It's now actually been a few weeks since I last filmed on this project just because the sun has been a bit sort of intermittent here in the UK but the last few days we've had some really good sunshine so I put uh, these two figures out again just for a little bit of extra de-yellowing and as you can see that this one has turned out really nice now the uh, main sort of torso of this one was pretty yellow so that's not looking too bad at all. There's a little bit of damage on the back of his uh, pelvis here uh, I'm going to tidy that up I'm just going to sort of trim off the worst bits and file it down to make that look a bit neater. Uh, this one here had um, sort of fairly yellow arms uh, they've certainly uh, whitened they're not uh, quite as white as uh, the main sort of part of the body but the plastic used on those arms sometimes doesn't tend to uh, whiten very well so I think I'm uh, overall very happy with those. The one with the ink on the arms I'm still working on that's back out in the sun today just with the uh, benzoyl peroxide spot cream on it that is already looking a lot better but uh, I'll show you the sort of the end results at the end of this video. Now on the X-Wing pilot I've already modified this little uh, Lego peg as you can see so this is a Lego axle pin I've trimmed down the end of it a little bit because uh, they are just a tad too big. I could have drilled out this hole here but I didn't want to so I've just sort of uh trimmed it down here and now that fits in quite nicely so I can glue that in place ready for uh, when we get the figures finished. But the first thing I want to do now is just to tidy up the edge of that just using a knife and some files and then we can get on with painting the figures. We can now get on to the painting of the figures. I'm going to be painting all uh, three figures at the same time because there's actually a little bit of duplicate across them so uh, it just saves sort of mixing paints over and over again. I'm going to start with the flesh tones because uh, you can see on this one the flesh has gone a very yellow colour on the front. Actually on the back of his neck you can see that's still quite an original sort of colour to his uh, neck there but for some reason it's all got uh, faded on the front and the arms of the uh, X-Wing pilot version of Luke. Again, it's actually a fairly similar colour. So I'm using a mixture, as I say. I've got a Humbrol number 61, and this is a flesh tone. If you don't have that one, you can buy Vallejo versions of that. Or I have this uh, Revel Aqua colour, which is also called flesh, and that's number 35. So you can get flesh uh, coloured paint from most sort of uh, different uh, manufacturers of paint. So just go for the one that uh, you generally use. I've also got a bit of uh, white Vallejo paint. So this is number 70.9 one white uh, because the flesh tone on this is a little bit lighter than what comes out of the box so uh, we're going to mix that down. This one I think is actually you can see that's a fairly close matching colour maybe just a little bit lighter so uh, yeah just a bit of mixing to get those right and I'll paint up all of these so that we've got the, the flesh back to how it should be.
I've got to say in the first part of this that I'm using matte paint so at the end of this I will be putting a clear satin coat on top of it all to make it look like the original paint for the, that the Star Wars figures came in. At the moment you can see these do have a very matte finish to them but that does, uh, will be changed by the time that top coat goes on. Now we're going to move on to the hair and I've been sort of playing around with a few different colours of yellow that I have to try and get. Uh, this quite vibrant yellow that's on the, this figure because this is uh, really the sort of the, the colour of Luke that I remember. There are different versions with sort of brown hair and, and darker hair but I want to go for this very yellow hair. So for that I'm using Humble uh, number 99 or it could be number 66. I always say that because I can never remember but I think it is 99 and I'm mixing in a bit of Vallejo white which is the 70.951. As you can see I have tried a few other different yellows but uh, they're just not quite the right colour. So uh, this uh, 99 with a bit of white in it if I just uh, mix that together there so you can see if I paint that onto uh, Luke's hair here that's really a very good match. It's a nice, it's sort of quite a vibrant yellow, it doesn't really look uh, realistic but that's not the point on these figures. As you can see I was unable to get rid of some of the black marks just next to his eyes. I'm actually going to uh, carefully paint over those with this hair colour and I think that will look just fine. So let's get both of these painted up and then uh, we'll let that dry and we can move on to uh, some of the other bits of uh, paint that need repairing. For Luke's boots I bought a couple of new paints so because I didn't have a colour that was quite the right match so I bought some uh, new Vallejo ones and this is uh, golden brown 17.877 and that mixed with a bit of white actually gives a very close match to the sort of beige of his boots. I did also buy this one which is uh, just called beige which is 70.917 but it's not quite yellow enough so what I've done here is mix some of this golden brown with a bit of white and that's what I'm going to be painting the boots with. For the eyes I'm going to be using this tool which I made which is basically a pin put into uh, the handle of an old paintbrush uh, because it means I've got very good control about putting a tiny amount of uh, black paint where needed. Well, what I'll do is I'll put the paint on, I'll let it dry and then I'm going to use a dry version of this so just basically take all the paint off and scrape away any paint that I don't need to uh, shape the eyes finely. It's such a fine sort of thing to do, uh, expect to do a few sort of uh, goes of it. Your, the first go may not look perfect so wipe it off and try again but uh, with a bit of practice and just a pin like this you can get some really quite nice looking eyes.
And here are the finished eyes. I'm uh, really quite pleased with them because it's such a tiny sort of area to paint. I'm never going to get them perfect, but I think the overall effect of those is looking very nice. So now we can move on to painting the belts. You can see there's just a little bit of paint wear on the belts. For that, I'm using some black acrylic. Again, this is uh, just the sort of uh, Vallejo stuff. So this is 70.950. And I've got some Humbrol brown paint. This is number 70. Uh, the paint on the belt is not actually black. If you look at it closely, it's got a slight brown tinge to it. So I'm going to be mixing those two together and I think that will do the job quite nicely. I've also taken the time to paint the boots and the final black bits on the, the uh, X-Wing pilot version of the body. So really it's just the belt to go. final thing to do is to put a clear top coat over all of the painting that I've done. So I'm going to be using this uh, Vallejo Satin Varnish. This is number 70.522. I find this gives the sort of the closest sort of looking finish to the original paint. So it's not quite gloss and it's not quite matte. It's just a little bit shiny and it really does uh, make it look uh, a lot like the original paint would have been. I'm going to be doing this in a few stages just because there's so many areas to paint on these figures with all the legs and everything. So I'll probably paint the legs first, let them dry and then I'll do the rest of the body and likewise uh, with the X-Wing version as well. So it's going to take me a little while to get this all painted on, but the end result should look really quite nice. Here is the figure that had the arms done with uh, black ink. So I've been using benzoyl peroxide on this. I probably reapplied this six or seven times now, and you can see that it's made a great improvement on it. It's certainly not perfect, but the overall effect is actually looking a lot better. You can see that most of the black has started to sort of fade. I'm sure if I did this a few more times, I'd probably get uh, it even closer to being white. But even still, this has gone from a sort of a very tatty looking figure that you couldn't do that much with actually to something that's sort of fairly usable. It's still a bit of a beta, but the overall effect is a whole lot better. So with these things, just persevere, keep putting them on. And at some point it will start to sort of fade away and you'll get something that looks a lot better. Generally with sort of small amounts of ink, it will remove it completely on something like this. This was just a real challenge and something I wanted to see how much I could remove. And I think, uh, yeah, overall, I'm pretty impressed with uh, what's going on. Certainly if I found a head, I would put that back on this figure and it wouldn't look too bad at all. And here are the two Luke farm boys now that all the paint is dry. And as you can see, they are looking really very nice. And compared to how they started, they're very displayable figures. As you can see, I've added a couple of uh, replacement lightsabers just to finish off the look. So this was the one that was uh, sort of a little bit damaged. You can see around the back, that's uh, where the damage had happened. So there's some uh, sort of a little bit sort of showing still. But as far as the rest of the figure goes, I think it looks really very nice. And certainly if you were to display this in a vehicle, so you put this in a land speed or something like that, I don't think you would even notice the fact that the back of that had been damaged. But the overall effect, yeah, is very nice. And you can see that also we've got that sort of shiny finish to the paint. And that's what uh, adding that uh, top coat does to it. Just gives it that final sort of look. And I'm still pretty happy with uh, how those eyes uh, went on. It's not perfect, but it does the job. And then we have this other figure, which is the one I'd already started to repair by uh, fixing his head on with a bit of Lego. But you can see, again, this figure looks really quite nice. I didn't paint all of the legs on this one. I just sort of touched up in various areas. But again, by the time you put the top coat on, you can't actually see that that has been repaired. And the advantage we have with this one is that I can take this head off and then put it onto this X-Wing body, which was also one that I was working on. So we now have a Luke X-Wing pilot. So I think that's quite a nice sort of little addition, considering I don't have a head for that X-Wing pilot. It's nice to be able to do something with that body, and it will certainly look quite good displayed with uh, some of my X-Wings here. So as you can see, with a sort of fair amount of work, I've actually ended up with some figures that are really quite nice and displayable. At some point, I may find some more spare heads, and I can sort of swap these out and uh, make them into different customs. But for now, I have two bodies with one head and one nice complete figure there. So I hope this video has been of interest to you. If it has, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching.
Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.